Welcome back to Code Time. This is episode three of pulling data with PHP and Vue. And in this episode, we're going to be covering the Dark Sky API. And this is the Dark Sky API here. And they say the easiest, most advanced weather API on the web. And it is pretty easy uh, to get it going. Couple things to need to note about this. Uh, it is, we has the same issue as we had with the Swappy API in that it has cores. It means you need to reference it from PHP. Another thing to think about here is this has a limit to the number of requests that you can make. So if you scroll down here where it says pricing, it's free up to a uh, thousand calls per day. So that's a good amount of calls, but if you were obviously going to build sort of a weather app that people are going to use um, or a mobile phone or something like that you're integrating this with, or you need to check on it, a uh, thousand calls per day may not be enough. And if that's the case, then it is 0 0.0001 per call, which is very, very cheap in the bigger sense of things. Obviously, if you need a larger amount, uh, you can contact them and set it up. This is all set up to go and integrate, so it'll scale as if you need it, and of course, you'll pay for it as you need it to scale. You need to create an account in order to do this. I have already created an account, but it's simply, uh, you essentially just put in your email address and password. For example, if I was signing up, email address, password, confirm your password, and you register. If I was to log in right now, uh, I'll put it in using one of my email addresses here. I will log in and we'll say uh, there is my dark sky API and I have an API key. And uh, I can see that my plan is a trial plan and I have 1000 free calls per day, essentially to evaluate, they say. It gives me a sample API call in which to call. And so here is uh, the API call. And you can see if I request that, I can see that in the URL there. And it brings me back my data. Uh, pretty awesome. If I typed in this longitude and latitude, which is right here, note the URL, api.darkside.net forecast, the API key, and then uh, the longitude and latitude. This is the longitude and latitude of the current location that they specified. I'm going to go for Pasadena. So I'll do longitude, or maybe we could just lat, uh, uh, generator maybe or something like that, generator. Yeah, a lot long convert to address. Okay, so then we can put an address in here. I'm going to do Pasadena, California. So it's going to look up those locations, and here is Pasadena, California. And that is the latitude, and that is the longitude. So I'd come up over to, I can close some of these things that I have open. And I can come back over here, and here is my latitude. And here is my longitude. And now this will pull the weather that it currently is in Pasadena. Cool, right? That's really awesome. So now I can see currently the pressure, wind speed, wind gust, wind bearing, cloud cover, temperature, everything. It's super easy. So uh, how do I get this to work? Well, same way. And I'm gonna make this one a little bit faster and I'm gonna make it faster by, we're just gonna take Swappy and I'm just gonna duplicate this. Now you say, well, whoa, whoa, I don't have Swappy. You can find these exercise files on the completed one for Swappy and the one for Dark Sky here on CodeTime.io uh, and then view the exercise files for this individual series. I'm gonna rename this to dark-sky and I wrote Dreyarch, so dark sky. And then I'll go into the URL here and I'll write dark sky. I did a hyphen in it. So dark sky dot API. 
And so, oh, why did I write dark sky API? This is dark sky dot test, right? Because we're running Laravel Valet. And that is the same as the other one, right? So we'll then drag this folder into Sublime Text. And we have our two files here. So our index.html and our process.php. And these are essentially going to be exactly the same process that we did previously. This time, though, we're going to grab this URL. And we're going to scroll down to where it says, hey, it's going to pass in this URL. Well, really, we're calling it here like that. And this has the longitude and the latitude. Instead of it being hard coded like this, I'm going to grab this and cut it out of that space. I'm going to go back to my index.html and I'm just going to paste this temporarily. Then go back to process.php here. And instead of person, I need to get a parameter of lat and another parameter of long. And there we go. Or you could do LNG, which is very common for longitude. Then I could add this to this value here the same way. Now note that it's comma separated. So here's the first one, lat. And then I'm going to do uh, single quotations and then append the longitude to it. And the longitude is now appended to the value. Then I can come over to my index.html uh, page and I can paste these values into a model of lat and a launch value or longitude value and then I can set these values there. And so now you can see those values are being set. I then can set these up as an input field the way I've set up the other one. So V model lat and V model uh, longitude here. So now I have the two lat and longitude are now set up uh, values. Then uh, where we said person height and name, I don't have that stuff so I can remove that. Down here we're going to call process and we're not going to call person, we're going to call lat and it's going to take the app.lat and then we're going to append a string to it and the ampersand to append another query. This one going to be long and here we, go, we can say equals plus sign and then the longitude. All right, let's break that down. This is going to be app.longitude. So lat equals plus app longitude and then a string and then app dot longitude. So lat and longitude are now appended. This is going to take the data and it's going to bring it back to, uh, I'm just going to call this uh, weather data. And then I can do weather data here and this is going to equal an object. So we're all set. Looks like it. Uh, I then want to take weather data and maybe just show this on the screen. Okay. Let's see if we messed anything up. So there's our longitude and latitude. We'll say get data and it says, uh oh, a non numeric value entered on line seven. Warning file get contents failed to open stream. No such file or directory at that location. So if we go back to this, it says here's that here's this and that and here's our longitude and here's our thing. So we messed something up in this URL here. I want to just see what that URL is. So I'm going to copy this code like this and I'm going to set the URL. So dollar sign URL is equal to, and that's our URL. If I want to just see what that is, I can say echo uh, that URL by saying echo URL. And then I'm going to comment out these. So it's actually not going to actually go and request anything. So now if I say get the data and it says non-numeric value encountered, uh, same thing on line seven. So it looks like Oh, you see the plus? That was supposed to be a dot. I put a little bit of JavaScript in there. Now if we click the data, that's our URL. It does look like it's in the correct syntax. So now we can take the URL and pass the URL to our file get contents. We don't need to echo the URL now. 
and then we do need to echo the data. So now we'll refresh, we'll say get the data, and now it brings back all of that data from that one request. A little bit of a forecast as well, down at the bottom. From here, we now don't need to do anything with PHP because we're done there. We can come back to this and say, I want to know, let's see, what kind of information do we want to get from this? I want to know what the wind speed is at that current time, so or that current location, at, at, which is essentially right now. So I want to know what that wind speed is. To do that, it'd be a good idea to console log response to the data. That way we can see uh, if it's nested into an object and it's deeper. So we'll say get the data and it brings back the longitude and latitude and then here we have alerts currently daily flags hourly latitude longitude minutely and offset i'm going to go with currently and it brings back an object and then it says what are the current things going on so what did i say we were going to get wind or something like that wind speed yeah so that's our wind speed so that is inside currently so then I would come up here and say, weather data needs to be wrapped in a conditional. So we could say something like uh, just a blank div. And then we could say um, v if weather data. So that means, do I have any weather data at all? And if I do, actually, I want to leave the same thing, weather data. I then want to look inside currently. And then I want to look for wind speed. All right. And then weather data needs to be a null value because if it was an object, it's an empty object, but it would still register. So now if we refresh this and say get data, it pulls down the data here, but I didn't see the data there. So maybe we did something wrong. Let's take a look. So we'll say currently. Let's see if I spelled everything right. Currently is good. If I click on currently and expand it, it's an object, very good. And I'll scroll down here, it says wind speed again. Wind speed is uppercase S, so that would definitely break it. I'll click get data. And this time, oh, I get 4.3, uh, and that is my uh, wind speed. So uh, not very windy at all. Uh, so you can see the sense of then you could really start to do whatever you want and run this however or mm, sort of whenever you want to run it and get whatever data that you want to get from it as well. And it seems to be accurate down to the minute. So as they have a minutely uh, uh, detector, essentially. So it's updating s some systems somewhere everywhere, probably wherever there's weather stations around uh, the world are then updating this dark sky API, which is probably pulling it from other places as well, and then updating its database, and then producing it as an API. So pretty cool there. We can see that it's 4.3. Then we could do some things like, if that number is greater than, eh, than uh, let's say five, then I could show a, like a windy icon, or if it's greater than 10 or greater than 100, then it would be like disaster, right? Something crazy wind. So, you can see how you could start to uh, very easily work with these values. Now, if I'd like this to happen on load, right, when it immediately loads, of course, I could change this any time. Like, I come in here and I could say, let's put this in as a 2, and then I'll say get data. And you can see wherever that location is. Uh, let's see here if we can find out some information about that location. We'll scroll down to this zone here and uh, time zone, and now oh, I just closed it. Let's go down to the second one, here we go. And it's currently, uh, our wind speed was 2.18, the wind gust, wind bearing, so a little bit windier. Temperature, 63.8, and the summary is clear. Ozone. Nearest storm distance, 898. I assume that's maybe miles. Maybe it could be some other measurement. All of these things, if we want to find out what measurements are, we would then go and look at the docs for uh, the Dark Sky API, and we'd be able to see uh, what that measurement is. And then we could do any conversions and create a function to do any of that that we may need.